the song made famous by the Bee Gees. Bee Gees, yeah. <laughs> that would have been my first go to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. None of that's going in. Oh, right. No. Good. Good. So well, we might need the material. Right. Need the material. <laughs> well, I've got I've got lots of um, backup material oh, good. for okay. this. Good. Which, um, but um, do you we just to... watched it now, and yeah. Hal, Hal's <laughs> given me a, a few of the thoughts on yeah. it. Yeah, uh, I've been watching some other ones at like double speed while I've been waiting for you guys to to come on as well. Um, okay, yeah. we should. I, I was thinking maybe we should do another few because it reminded me of another few that mm. are actually good episodes. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, James, you got the script. Yeah, I do. I do. do you, does everyone remember how to do this? No. Okay. Well, let's just um, make, we'll make it up as we go. Don't worry. Make it up as we go along. Britain. An ancient kingdom with legends of violence, cruelty, and torment in its blood. Join your hosts, Ross, John, and James, as they bravely tread where few would dare. Witness their journey into the horrific history of British horror. They are the General Witch Finders. So, ladies and gentlemen, goblins and ghouls, welcome back at last to the 29th episode of the General Witchfinders <laughs> podcast. I'm James in Bournemouth in Southern England. Are we still not at episode 30? No, that's no. the next one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm John Pountney in South Wales, which is in the south of Wales. I'm Ross in Dorchester in Southern England. And this time we bring you Tales of the Unexpected. Tonight, the memory man. Second of three sessions in the final of the BCE International, the winner to carry away thirty-five thousand pounds. Neil Folds, are playing in his first major final, set the early pace this afternoon. In no way overawed by the occasion, the battle-hardened Cliff Thorburn was in no mood to let Folds get away. Thorburn versus Folds later tonight on ITV. And you can see that snooker here on Television South in half an hour at 10.30. First, though, it's time for another Tale of the Unexpected. Tune, haven't you? Did it? Which, well, the, the link we watched didn't do the theme, no, did it? Which and, is a bit. And people oh, have been thanking was... him for doing not cutting it off in the. I know, I saw that. Yeah. The high what? point of any episode of Tales of the Unexpected is the theme tune, yeah. isn't it? And the credits, absolutely. Yeah, it's just weird. It's cut the, for the end, didn't it? The version that I watched had it. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just put, oh, into, I, I put it to YouTube. Tales of the Unexpected, Memory Man. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. Oh, anyway, doesn't, doesn't follow my life. Well, James, you're going to tell us all about it. Yes. So, Tales of the Unexpected was a British television series that aired between 1979 and 1988. Smack bang in our f- um, febrile young yeah. minds, yeah. <laughs> developing Absolutely. brains, I would say. Each episode told a story, often with a sinister and wryly comic undertones, with an unexpected <laughs> twist ending. <laughs> Every episode of series one and a number of episodes in subsequent series were based on short stories by Roald Dahl, collected in the books Tales of the Unexpected, Kiss Kiss and Someone Like You. Made by Anglia Television for ITV with interior scenes recorded at their Norwich studios oh, while location filming mainly occurred across East Anglia. <laughs> the iconic theme music, uh, as I, I learned this today and I was yeah. amazed, for the series was written by composer Ron Grainer, yeah. who is responsible for the Doctor Who theme, yeah, the theme from The Prisoner, and, and of course, Step So and So. Yes! Etc. Right, amazing. 
so yeah, uh, just um, what so many strings to his bow. That what man. a knack for a tune. Indeed. Later episodes were set in different locations outside the United Kingdom. I remember mm. seeing one on Jersey. I thought that's mm. oh, yeah. We watched one set in America when we was in oh. um, Glastonbury. About yes, Glastonbury. yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll talk about that in a bit. Yeah. What about with the one many... with the turtle? Ooh. Have you seen the one with the turtle? Was that no. with a little boy on the back? Yes. Well, I had never seen it, but I've read, I got the book with the short story in. It's absolutely mental. Uh, I, I can't imagine how they <laughs> depicted that on film. Because it, well, it, yeah. very badly on video, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, with it, it looks like an episode of uh, Duty Free with Keith Barron. <laughs> um. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very much like a myth, that one, though, isn't it? Yes. It's not, yeah. Yes. We've got it on DVD somewhere. I'm not sure if it's in our attic somewhere. Mm. Carry so, on, James. All right. Okay. On Saturday night, it's interesting. It's, it's Saturday because for me, it's always a Sunday. Mm. Oh, I always, really? to me, it's Sunday night. I've got to go to school tomorrow. Yeah. And on ITV, it's Tales of the Unexpected in the South Bank show. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, and then din, 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 a din, feeling din, of sadness. Din. Yeah. <laughs> well, but we... according to this, yeah. yes, on Saturday the night, on Saturday night, April 16th, 1983, just after William Shatner's TJ Hooker on oh. ITV, the episode we watched was aired. <laughs> the Memory Man, directed by Peter Duffel, based on a story by prolific writer Henry Slesar, by who... Uh, by whom the term coffee break was coined. Ooh, so he's in advertising first. Of all. <laughs> Apparently so. That's what wow. Wikipedia told me. Great. <laughs> and therefore must be true. And yeah. dramatised by Dennis Cannon. The episode featured Colin Blakely. And then Ross has put some of their credits after their names. But he's been yeah. quite rude yeah. about, <laughs> about one of the actors' credits. So I'll, I'll just say that it features Colin Blakely, Judy Gleason, uh, sorry, Judy Geeson, uh, John Biggers, G. G, 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 oh, there you are, sorry. G. Judy Geeson, Judy Geeson, <laughs> John Biggerstaff, John Judd. And the reason why we are doing this yeah. episode, the Three late. Three months late. <laughs> Great, Bernard Cribbins. I don't think Bernard will mind. To be no. <laughs> what are the other? What are the pieces of information that we're missing there, James? That you have cut out. Oh, for? okay. Well, Colin Blakely um, was in the Private Life of Sher- Private Life of Sherlock Holmes and A Man for All Seasons. Oh. yeah. Um, Judy Geese. Judy Geeson. Am I saying that right? Geeson. So, Jason, sorry, Judy Jason uh, was in To Sir With Love, 10 Rillington Place, and apparently a couple of Star Trek Voyager episodes, and still was working she today. Really? Yeah, she's still, yeah, she's got a film coming out this year as well. Good God. She's in Fear in the Night with Peter Cushing, which is something we potentially should watch. Ooh, yeah, I would like to watch yeah. 10 Rillington Place. Is that any good? Uh, it's long and it's, it's, okay. it's unremittingly uh grim but at the end the guy who finds the um dead bodies is patrick from eastenders oh okay ah, so that's it uh, but then patrick. Uh, it also says john biggerstaff and then ross is just putting brackets not known for much no, there was- which i thought was a bit harsh on poor mr biggerstaff <laughs> yes so yeah and then john judd was in scum on the daddy now a bridge too far <laughs> Um, the huge three hour, three and a half hour long, uh, disastrous Arnhem campaign World yeah, War Two movie. Film. Yeah, uh, The Prince and the Pauper, and incidentally, he's been married to Helen Shapiro apparently since 1988. <laughs> oh wow! Well, it's quite late in life. No, it's a, it's her third husband. It's a whoa, third whoa. lady. Killer. But are they know, still married now? Right apparently so, according Good to IMDb. Wow! Wow! Right. So, back to our, our muse for this episode. Bernard Cribbins became known in the UK for his successful novelty records, The Hole in the Ground, and, of course, <laughs> Right Said Fred, yeah. and for his appearances in comedy films, including Two Way Stretch and the Carry On series. His other screen roles include the astronaut Vincent Mountjoy in The Mouse on the Moon, Albert Perks in The Railway Children, the barman Felix Forsyth <laughs> in Alfred Hitchcock's Friendly. Yeah. <laughs> no, friendly. <laughs> friendly. Friendly. Oh, yes, friendly. Very did. That, that was the, uh, the, the poorly received sequel. <laughs> right. The barman... <laughs> Sorry. The Barman Felix Forsyth in Alfred Hitchcock's Frenzy. The Phoebe... <laughs> Sorry, I'm falling apart. What's, what did right, you say okay. about... Lovely. Pulls your yeah, tits more than he pulls pints. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, the Barman Felix Forsyth in Alfred Hitchcock's Frenzy, which was featured previously on a yes. Devil Witchfinders episode. 
and the pretentious hotel guest, Mr. Hutchinson, in the Amazing. classic 40 Hours episode, The Hotel Inspectors. Yes. On television, he was a regular and pro- f- prolific reader for the BBC series Jack and Oring, clocking up 114 appearances. Good God. Wow. Between 1966 and 1991, he narrated the children's program, The Wombles, against so many touchstones for people of our, ge- for people of our generation and sort of similar age. And he played the title role in CBBC series old jack's boat in the 1966 film daleks invasion earth 2150 Uh, ad uh cribbins portrayed tom campbell a companion to doctor who 41 years later he began appearing in the revival series of doctor who as wilfred mott the grandfather of regular companion donna noble and a temporary companion to the 10th doctor so if he you. didn't do much in his life, really. What a career. <laughs> and so, something I, I found out recently, mm. um, that he auditioned to play the Doctor after um, John Pertwee. Did he? Oh, uh, that would have been good, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. And um, so he would have been um, the fourth, would have been instead of Tom Baker. Wow. And, and um, he, he's, in, during his interview, he was talking about the, all the stuff he did in the army mm. and uh, and saying that like, he could be quite, you know, quite handy and, st- and then and the uh the producer was saying oh yeah the doctor doesn't fight anyone and then he said that when he watched tom doing it, it yeah the first thing he did in, in uh, robot was just like beating people up and stuff so he- <laughs> 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 but he said um, he never heard back either way so he just assumed he didn't get it so yeah, yeah. it's just quite rude i thought he could still get the part though couldn't he I suppose, <laughs> if he if he never heard back I was very moved by the passing of Bernard Cribbins. Um, even writing that little bit up, I had a little tear to myself. I don't what know. about the Queen? No, oh, I wasn't <laughs> interested in that, really. <laughs> Good you- God. I thought we'd do a special Queen episode. Really? really? What's she been in? Uh, um, is there anything we can think of, that, anything horror that involves the Queen? Hmm. Hmm. We'll have to try and hmm. think about that. My dad was telling me that um, the reason they seal up the coffins because... Queen Elizabeth the first head exploded um, when she was in a stake. Have you got a joss stick in there, Cleves? Yeah, because it, we burnt some f- um, fish um, today, and it's it a bit <laughs> fishy. Up there. Right, 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 right. I was just making sure you haven't got a ghostly um, apparition <laughs> material. <laughs> Ectoplasm sort of coming yeah. out of my nostrils. <laughs> no. Feel free to cut this bit out, Ross. But my theory was that she was never in that coffin at all. That they just no. they just buried her in Windsor. Yeah, the, after she died, a few people have said this. Yeah. Oh, okay. But That's yeah, what Hell thought my... as well. I reckon yeah. that she just shed her skin, and she was in some kind of like um, in that a giant um, hyperloop. Um, tunnel thing shooting across the under the ocean and that's what got blown up but it wasn't a gas pipe it was um <laughs> it was just her being sent to her underground lair is that is that Dave, david Ike's exactly yeah. is that Dave, david yeah. Ike's thoughts yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's gone quite quiet recently hasn't he he's a, <laughs> Ike. Hey, david Ike. I, I feel very yeah oh, oh no I, I just, bearing, bearing in mind you know i'm really obsessed with on? people that well, I'm sure he probably would. Bring my, you know, I love. It's one of my things that I'm utterly fascinated by in life, which is you know people that believe in conspiracy theories. Mm. Like, why yeah, do you believe yeah, it yeah. when there's no evidence for it? Why do people yeah. get drawn to this stuff? And then so I've read quite yeah. a lot of stuff about it, saying that like, in the early noughties, and this is true. I back this up from when my time working in a bookshop. Ike was huge. Mm. Yeah, you know, he played Wembley Arena for a yeah. couple of nights. <laughs> he did. David <laughs> Ike and Ian Brown. <laughs> yeah. Lo- <laughs> Are you sure that wasn't when he when he when he was in play, when he was playing football at Wembley, wasn't he? No, no, Ross. So no, this this is all. Um, uh, so yeah, he was huge, and then it, it's like QAnon has taken the wind out of his sails. But you you oh. often see him turning up and you know giving quotes in places. But now it's like he's he's gone in the tracksuit. Oh, there's yeah. a there's yeah. a brilliant podcast series I've started listening to mm. called Hoax. It's all about like another you know satanic panic thing. Yeah, going yeah. on, but um, they they. They uh, they feature a bit where uh, one of the people who's uh, perpetuating the hoax is talking to someone on David Ike Radio on DavidIke dot com, and then yeah. it's all David's texting me now, and he said, um, "If you can send us all those documents, he will be happy to publish them and all this kind of stuff." <laughs> Yeah. I'm listening to that podcast as well, Ross. It's very good. It's good, isn't it? I yeah. can recommend it. Yeah, 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 enjoy it a lot. Right. Anyway, so, so let's uh, let, let, let's crash on with this. Mm. Then, shall yes. we? So. Tells the unexpected. So, so even though it says Saturday night, it's Sunday night for me. 
Yeah. Silhouettes of Naked Ladies. I thought ladies. it was on on a Wednesday night, so Ooh. I was miles out. I think it bounced around the schedule. So I can tell yes. you what was on that night because I've got the TV mm. listings for, for oh, yeah, come that, on, that, it is with it from that day. So uh, on ITV, uh, when do you want me to start? Yeah. In the morning or we'll just go all the way through? No, no, go, six, go, six, six o'clock. Prime time. From six, but just before, yeah. mm. on both, I've got ITV and BBC. It just reminded mm. me of, of the absolute, I hated the fact that sport was on television from 12.15 <laughs> until five past five. You know, oh. world of sport on ITV. If only they would bring it Brilliant. back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that was on ITV and then we had... Um, a grandstand on BBC from yeah, like half yeah. past 12 until 10 past five. Fucking hell. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing TV. Uh, but yeah, yeah. on I- ITV, we had, uh, when World of Sports finally finished, uh, the news, Metal Mickey, followed by the Fall Brilliant. Guy, Brilliant. followed by the Children's Roy <laughs> Variety performance, <laughs> which I got, I've got who was on it that year as well. So Metal Mickey. Featured uh, Royal Variety. Of one of th- the uh, James Randall lookalikes Mickey Doe Lens. Yes. <laughs> Mickey Doe Lens was behind that. The fevered wank dream of uh, Mickey Doe Lens. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Stu, Fan- Stu Francis. Was Stu Francis. One. Yeah. Who worked Crush Your Grape. Checkers. Yeah. Rod Holtz. Yeah. yeah, of course. Uh, Rod- Roger de Corsi. Yeah. And Jimmy Nookie Cr- Bear. Yeah, and Jim- yeah, the bear. <laughs> Jimmy Cricket. And I thought Jimmy Cricket was uh, a, l- a bit later than um, 1984. No. Was, no. He was Peak, he was peak Cricket. Yeah. Uh, Martin- There's more. <laughs> Martin <There's> Daniels, um, <laughs> the only the only female on 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 here was Bonnie Langford. Uh, on that Brilliant. Line. Russ Abbott, Kajigugu, um, Modern this Romance. This is a packed, absolutely packed schedule. Isn't yeah. It? Oh yeah, Kim Wilde, <laughs> Kim Wilde as well. There we go. Mm. So let's go back there. Lovely yeah. Kim Wilde. TJ Booker. That was Wit Woo. That was. Uh, that that was also before Kajigugu decided that people weren't taking them seriously enough, so they needed to really launch themselves just as Kadja. <laughs> is is that group. what they did? <laughs> yes. So for a while, they I just never knew that. Kadja. <laughs> Kadja. <laughs> I, I was, they were actually in the top 10 that are on that week as well. I've got that if you want Brilliant. to be in the top 10 from that day. Or, so what, oh, hang on, man. hang on. So what time was TJ Hooker on? <laughs> TJ Hooker was on at uh, quarter to nine. So Towson Expected one was quarter uh, to 10. Yes. Ooh, it's quite late. Quite I think, late, yeah. I think Towson Unexpected for me was this, one of the things which... I would sneak down and my yes. mum would be asleep and I'd watch it on TV then. I, I was allowed yeah. to watch it as a treat, I think. Mm. Mm. I, I, I think. I think similar for me. It just makes well, me think, think of dressing parents for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Well, I there's an episode that features prominently with dressing gowns, which is the main one that I remember. Well, maybe maybe, maybe we'll come to later. Maybe, oh, yeah, it maybe still haunts me to this day. Yes. And I can remember that one with uh, Joan Collins and some like weird sculptures outside and at the end she gets beheaded or something it was weird I remember thinking it was weird when I was a kid and I've never revisited it I well, just didn't understand they just need to bring on. this kind of stuff back because it's back. like it, it was like we'll bring in a star and then we'll make them look weird and weird things will happen to them and that's the end isn't yeah. it really so it's Holly Willoughby comes that- in now and maybe there's a wax figure of her and at the end she's melted and <laughs> The real Holly Willoughby is melted as well. <laughs> but they st- on, li- live on TV with Philip Schofield. <laughs> oh. And it would just be 30 minutes to build up to that ending, won't it, really? Uh, I'm, I'm just waiting for Philip Schofield. Yeah, you know, uh, Ross. <laughs> Ross. Look, I'm not not, Say, not not because I want in- no, not because I want him to. Don't include I'm, this. No, all I'm saying is that I, <laughs> I, yeah, he's, I'm take, he's probably taken this so badly. You know, this yeah. sudden t- turn of, of the um, the, the yeah. public of the enemy British. number one. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. he's done nothing. Yeah. It's just oh, oh man. It's my, even my my barber was having a, uh, having a go at him the other day. <laughs> it was your barber. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just saying how disgusting you thought it was. And I was like, mm, I don't think it actually happened. This is, again, a massive it's, it's conspiracy never theory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. David Icke. Yeah. They need to freshen up the act on this morning and they've had to try and find a way to get them off. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Break the golden handcuffs. We're, we're talking about an episode where Philip Schofield... Yeah. Um, it's there to be written, isn't it? Exactly. How would yes. he do it? Would he jump through one of the LED screens in the background, <laughs> which is showing a slow mo version of the River Thames forever? Well, now that even though they're now in Television Center, well, the final yeah. shot would be him laying in state, and and all the public um, <laughs> filing past him. 
uh, yeah. re- regretful that what they drove him to. And then do you know what would happen? It w- there would be like a hologram of the Queen there looking at his coffin and she wouldn't bow to his coffin. Uh, yeah. And she's got Gordon the Gopher on her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who, 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 and she just makes him do that laugh. They, 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 would put, they would put an old black armband on him, wouldn't they? Zoom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just Wilson the butler there as well. <laughs> that was, there called, a, that was called a, Burrow, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> was there a broom? That, Did a broom come in at one point? That was a janitor, wasn't it? I can't remember. Oh. I thought there was just a broom which would come in and out, like, <laughs> no, you know, like a sweeping No expense spared, was there? <laughs> um, so anyway, this episode, mm. it, I found this quite a slippery beast, mm. to be honest. Mm. I couldn't tell what was happening until about the last five minutes. And then it, <laughs> then when it finished, Hell said if they missed off the ending. <laughs> 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 yeah. So we were just like, What's happening? So it kind of, it opens with him putting up some adverts in a shop or something. Yeah. Well, I can remember um, my mum putting adverts in a shop window, but I can't remember what for. And that sounds really yes. dodgy, doesn't it? I was about to say, the, it was the early 80s internet, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's yeah, how you yeah, got yeah, stuff yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah. 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 And he, impl- was, I- he did imply that it would cost extra if you were a prostitute to put the cards up in the window, wasn't it? Yeah. Who said that? The guy. He said, oh, well, how much? It just depends what you're advertising. He said, oh, I'm not a model. Oh. Oh, I didn't. I don't know if I caught, caught that bit. Um, I once bought a Ford Capri from an advert in in Tesco's. Oh yeah, in uh, in big Tesco's in Cabalva. I bought a, a Capri for two hundred and twenty pounds. I think um, I with a very badly slipping clutch. I think I wanted to put one in the window asking for a pen pal, but the fact <laughs> it was in my own, in the shop of my own own newsagent, so we're going to be very far away. <laughs> Yeah, so this man is basically, um, he's just taking off um, Rigsby for me. He's just playing Leonard Rossiter. Mm. Mm. Uh, He's playing Leonard Rossiter, playing Rigsby. Mm -hmm. Mm. Um, And I thought it was going to be a drama about quizzing. Right, okay. Yeah. Like um, Barry from EastEnders in real life loves loves quizzing, doesn't he? So I thought it might be something like a drama about... What what, what was the name of the guy who who cheated on the... um the Ma- Ma- Major, Major the Charles Ingram. Yeah. yeah, the guy that coughed in the background. Mm. Yeah, so I thought maybe it's going to be a drama about quizzing and memory, but very quickly it changes. Yeah. Tack. Well, and then that's... this man goes to his weird little church. Yeah, so he's set up a he's whole school room. Yeah. <laughs> Bizarre. With kids' so desks. Weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And then he's got like a secretary or a girlfriend. Yeah. You can't really tell which. And that's uh, TV's Judy Geeson. Mm. who it was a very big pinup in the 70s. I don't know, by this point, she was probably still very famous, but I don't know what if she was still quite as prolific as she was in the 70s, because mm. she did absolutely loads in the 70s. Um, but uh, again, like their relationship, can you tell what it's meant to be? No, because he looks way too old for her. And I well, I've... My notes was he's punching way above his weight. <laughs> way like, way above his weight. Like, He's like Muhammad Ali, <laughs> um, uh, or like fighting Rod Wall, Nor- yeah. dress, dress, <laughs> dress or maybe boxer. Norman Wisdom yeah. knocking out Muhammad Ali mm-hmm. um, with his hands tied behind his back. It's like what? It just doesn't make any sense. And it looks like he's been in this building for a very long time. Yes, doesn't it? Yes. So, was it a fact that his? It's, his, it like a church. The, his memory um, training school has used to be successful. Yeah, it's fallen on hard times, times, maybe. Hard times. Yeah. yeah. Or was it, yeah. Or was it a case of like, he, he's never had any people working there? It was, yeah. No. So what was well, she doing? Was she, she was one of his pupils. Yes. So who yes. has now come to work for him? But there was also a romantic undercurrent. <laughs> Question mark. Because, like, she says, oh, well, I'm going to go and leave. You know that guy who we met in the ho- the Grand Hotel in Brighton? Do-do-do. He's very rich. And yes. And it does sound like he's going to be making a lot of money because he runs an oil rig off of the North, the North Sea, yeah. you know, just, just off of Aberdeen. And then he's like, oh, no, no don't leave me, don't leave me. Yeah. And she says, no, no, no. Well, like, you know, I'm going, I'm sorry. And she's like, well, it was never really this meaning them two was never really working was it which i thought no. oh man you know put the knife in yeah, and, the, and then he says together yeah. later on in the yeah. episode well yeah because it's like she walks out this is her leaving 
Yeah. And then again, she sees her two other times and she leaves yes. again. She leaves in installments. Yes. yes. She, she leaves on three separate what? occasions. But yeah, he was, he then says to her, she's leaving. Wait, if I find some oil out in the, out in the, the yards, yeah. she went, Oh, I'll come back then. Yeah. So thus I've put, thus convinced, thus, thus uh, confirming it is all about money. Yeah. That's just she, written in it. Yeah. Peak yeah. Thatcherism. Yeah. She, and when he, when she's got bad news to tell him, she says, I've bought us a bottle of scotch. A whole <laughs> bottle of scotch? <laughs> like, how bad is the news? People's alcohol um, intake was much higher in the yes. early 80s. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And it's interesting you say this, Ross, because I, the other day when I was driving home from work, I had Radio 4 was... You'd had three pints, James, already. <laughs> I had, yeah, yeah. He was right. towing his and Nan's booze was... trolley behind him. <laughs> oh, Nan's booze trolley, lovely. The hostess trolley. Right, so um, they were... And on this, this show on Radio 4, they were talking about how public attitudes had changed over the yes. years. And they cited, first of all, people being up, picking up dog shit now. <laughs> and they were just saying, you know, that's something that just simply didn't happen. Whereas I was now, that that's normalised. Yeah. Well, they, uh, and also, they said, you know, kind of like smoking, how, you know, that's yeah. the views on that have changed. And they were yeah. saying that, you know, this idea that public values are set in place absolutely aren't you know it's not the case at all things mm. do change and they highlighted and said I thought, oh yeah that is true that they said oh if you look back at the culture of like the 1970s and 1980s drinking and drinking in the day was far more de rigueur yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah everyone yeah, would yeah. go to the yeah, pub yeah. Yeah. pub at lunchtime yeah, yeah right and it's true and they just said this just doesn't happen anymore and i thought oh, that we, that's we, went we to a- used to do it in college yeah. like people so i'm talking about 1995 Foundation, no, 96, foundation course. Mm. Everyone would go to the pub yep. and most of the boys would have a pint. I wouldn't have a pint because I've never drunk mm. a pint. But I can remember some of the boys having like two pints at like one o'clock in the afternoon all my and best going pa- back to college. All my best painting was done after a couple of pints. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, that's bizarre, isn't it? So that must have been, I would have been, so I wasn't even 20 at that point. Mm. Yeah. So I don't think anyone, I know, and everyone was smoking in the pub then as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I would have a basket of chips. We'd be smoking um, in college, wouldn't we? Yeah, so smoking in the college building. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, in the um, in the in Tommy's bar. Yeah. Oh, classic. But we was told. Um, so when uh, Beck's great uncle died, um, we had to go and sort of clear out his house, and uh, we had to get the keys from some of his friends. And they were. We turned up at probably about eleven o'clock. You could tell they was pissed already. These old, <laughs> these old people, and they just would not have it that that, that Beck wouldn't. Ha- well, we wouldn't all have some, a drink while we was there with them. And he was. And Beck was telling him, "Drive yourself. Okay, we'll just do a small one." And they were getting so insistent that we must have alcohol before <laughs> yeah. before they left. Yeah, yeah I amazing. think it, it's just it is so, so much more um, drinking was going on back then. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, Evidence. we've got past the first five minutes of this episode <laughs> so far. Um, so then, oh, set, all I've got Cribbins. is... Hello, Cri- Cribbins comes in. Uh, so it, I, I, I've had the debate with myself. Is she secretary? Is she his partner? Uh, mm. Like, what's going on? And then it's the point of the episode comes in, which is Bernard Cribbins, and he's basically forgotten something, mm-hmm. which mm. he wants to remember, which... Mm doesn't seem to tally up with the guy no, because he's, yeah, what he's he, offering. He, he teaches people how to remember. To improve not to remember. Yeah, not, not, yeah, not how... Not, to recall. Yeah, it's, it's not about um, delving into someone's memories, is it? It's more mm. to do with how to make your memory better. Um, so then it's explained that Cribbins has, has basically put something um, in of a great value. Uh, so does he say at that point what it is? It's fair, he, he says it's very important. Yes. And it's absolutely urgent that I, that, that I get yes. this thing back. So he's put it in a locker in a station and then he's mm. forgotten the key code um, because it's made in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in inverted commas. Which goes back to um, our episode on the stone tape where they were obviously... There was a yeah. lot of anxiety about Japanese see, was, yeah. technologies <laughs> in, the, in this week. <laughs> Latent <laughs> racism and worries about yeah. Japanese taking over. There was there was a bit when the, he um, he was he to prove that he's got an excellent memory. He recalled the uh, some acts which were on a on a, uh, a variety yeah. act, and there was a very yeah. racist um, description I, of. You'll be pleased to know, Ross. I uh, I, I made a note of that. <laughs> yeah, because I just put that cancelled. Yeah, <laughs> but they were called. Yeah. 
the kinky do Chinese ang- acrobats <laughs> and the Jesus. and the great fedora. <laughs> and, <laughs> is that like just, just a jump. giant fedora hat? <laughs> But I hope so. I was about to say, I just can imagine John Peel going, and oh, that was the Kiki Do Chinese Acrobats <laughs> and the, the Great Fedora. And their uh, EP is, is coming out on Island Records. <laughs> now here's the fall. Bingo Masters, break out, etc. I think you should be known as the Great Fedora from now on, James. Yes, right. I'm, I'm down with that. But, but I'm, you I'm ne- claiming but it. Never wear a no hat, pl- he never wears a hat. No, that's the right. Great Why? Why is he called the Great Fedora? <laughs> that's for me to know. Yeah, sorry. So yes, so so the the, the mise en scene of, of, of this this whole thing is something in a railway locker. Bernard Cribbs establishes that it's a new kind of technological lock that Master you piece. put it. Yes, that you know once once you put it in, um, you it, did, did they say first of all it gives you like a randomized set of numbers. No, you have yes, to type, no, you're, on a, you're, like or a, you or you you type them in and you it gives you print it out for you to see what you get. Yes, yes, you get a paper printout. That's yeah. right. Yeah, but and then in the interim, mm. he has yeah screwed up, destroyed, and lost the the number code. He can't remember the number code, and he is now mm. asking our protagonist the 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 nemonist. Yeah. The, uh, yes, yeah, so something just occurred to me. Called. Right. Yeah. Yes. So. Um, he rem- he knows he's seen this guy somewhere before and because the the, yes. the nemesis is a excellent memory man. He can he yes. remember mm. seeing him in the newspaper and he knows yes. that he's a famous safe cracker. Mm. Well, it dawns on him later on. Then. Yeah, so he starts. But if he's a famous safe name, cracker, right? why doesn't Cribbins just break the? Um, it's exactly what I open, <laughs> open up the thing to get it out. Yeah. Well, he does it with dynamite. Oh, yeah, that was. He's the, a safe cracker who does it with dynamite, but that's right. what we. That's the ending where you're just like. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? So yes, yes. Um, he so then he draws agrees. a moustache on yes. a newspaper picture of him, doesn't which, he? which is nuts because it's yeah. like ah, as if that suddenly makes Bernard Cribbins look any way different. Any but he's still exactly but, but is he doing that in his memory or in his mind? Because <laughs> no, no, no. I, think, I, I mm. couldn't work that out either <laughs> because oh, it's well. like it's his memory of reading it in the paper, and then does he go back to the paper and draw on it, or does he? Is he? This is something you're seeing inside his brain. Well, possibly. Yes, uh, that's what I questioned. Um, with a bad video effect, wasn't it? It's just like mm. Lois Lane drawing the glasses on Superman and Superman yes. 2 in the, in the paper, and then like S- yes. the vibe. So, so he agrees to sort of take Cribbins on board with, uh, he draws the, the fair conclusion that whatever Cribbins has stowed away must be loot from his last safe. Not track. drugs. Was safe. Mm. Yeah, it's not drugs. And I put down <laughs> Bernard Cribbins' angry voice is one of the best angry voices in the world. Yeah. He sounds yeah. Amazing. When he's angry, he sounds amazing. So, someone his voice um, takes on a so, whole different. So loved and so soft. Nice. You do feel yeah. like, you want, yeah. like, you want to cross him, would you? Wouldn't yeah. gone across him. No. So yes, your tits established- more than you've been pulling pints. <laughs> Don't put this in. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put that in. We'll have Corbynites right into us. Our uh, our memory man starts to give him a very kind of pared down version of of his memory course in which he tells you some very basics about Freud and the unconscious and stuff like that. And it <laughs> yeah. comes down to association, assimilation, and correlation. Mm. And he's like, just hurry up and tell me how to remember things. <laughs> and then that doesn't that doesn't work. And he suggests, oh yeah. well, you know, maybe I can hypnotize you. Mm. Because that's yes. often the case this bit may be a person. You I can actually you know access the unconscious more more readily and many things which we believe have been forgotten by uh, you know, in our sort of front brain can be uh, can be retrieved mm. from from the cortex. So, yeah, they decided they're going to do that. And once again, we then get another scene where he speaks to Judy Jason. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mary. She's got that. The, so he Mary, sees Mary yes. again, and he's he's like, "Don't leave yet. I'm about to make a lot of money." <laughs> yes, and she's just really not not having it. She's like, "Oh no, well, I'm still going to go. I'm still going." Ah, oh, yeah. this is when he's reading a f- big orange book, <laughs> which is just called Hypnosis. Yeah, <laughs> which, which looks like it's drawn with letter set on the cover of it. Doesn't so it? it probably was. By the yeah. <laughs> but the, it really made me laugh out loud. That did, I but like which that. I implies that he he didn't 
even know how to hypnotize this guy. No. That's, that's why he <laughs> sent him away. He thought I can learn yeah. this overnight. And then, yeah. yeah, yeah. And and then and then Cribbin just um, succumbs to the hypnosis very very quickly, doesn't he? Yes. Within ten seconds, he's hypnotized. Yeah. Charlie Crabs, as we find out that he's called at this point. Yeah. Mm. Um, he's the uh, that's his robbery name. I don't know if that's some kind of robbery pseudonym or if he was christened Charlie Krabs. <laughs> um, it's quite an unusual surname, isn't it? Uh, well, it not, is. not in um, Portland near where I live. Apparently, most oh, of the people really? in Portland are called Crab. Oh, is that? oh, really? And um, if you go oh, and look at the War Memorial there, it's just all, it's got all, loads, lots of crabs. Up it's it's very Wicked crabs. Man, Ross. Yeah. That's all very Wicked. Yeah. <laughs> That sounds like a good EF Benson ghost story where they're all descended from crabs yeah. that come out of yeah. the sea once a year or something. Or with a certain tide, they all they all scuttle yes. sideways. Yeah, 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 into, yeah, yeah. Into the foam. That's excellent. Write that for you, someone. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yes, he got he, to now. <laughs> um, he's now about to... Uh, so he now hypnotises very quickly Bernard Cribbins, who mm. then gives him the number, uh, which I wrote down, which is 154-6237. That's, that's the yes. number. It's locker number 154, and the, the code was 6237. That's um, not Victor Melton's is, phone number. Uh, that's 4291. 4291, <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> amazing. And then that thing where he picks up the phone and he's, he's expecting to be the phone and it's a puppy. Yeah. That one time. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's action. <laughs> Is it? Well remembered. Uh, uh, and <laughs> he, having ascertained the, the number of the, the, the lock, uh, yes. our memory guy is absolutely thrilled. He brings Cribbins back out of the, the trance and says, yes. sorry, mate. Ha <laughs> ha. Couldn't get anything. But anyway, I've got to go now. Uh, have your money back. Ha ha, bye. And then sprints off. Straight away, you think, I'm just going to follow him. He, he probably has got yeah. something. That, that seemed oh, weird. Um, you'd also question why he hasn't ushered you out of his church place and locked the yeah. door. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's just left you stood there in the street, left the building Help open. Yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then comes back and is worried that he's still inside. Well, don't go back there then. If he- <laughs> <laughs> Why would he still be there? Yeah, so he goes to the station, goes to the locker. Yeah. Um, so for a little, a little bit of business where he forgets the number. Yes, and then he hears the, the platform number, which reminds him. So, so he puts seven in, at the end. Yeah. Gets the, yeah, gets the bag out, goes back to his weird um, church classroom. Woman's on the sea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> opens the bag finds the money in there mm. yeah and then finds a shoe box full of wires it looked like yeah. to me yeah so i was just like okay what's that and dynamite uh, wait for yes. it. no no you i don't think you see the dynamite to start off well with, i i couldn't off see with. dynamite or anything so i was just I- like I've what's just that written a box down, full of wires <laughs> i've just written down old tenors klaxon it's just, oh, yeah, it's just yeah, nice yeah. to see a load of yeah, old yeah, tenors, yeah, massive yeah, yeah. tenors, ten pound mm. notes that they had. But this is intercut with um, his uh, girlfriend talking, saying, Mary. "I don't want to leave him. After all, I, yes. I'm yeah. too attached to him. Too attached yeah. to him. Is it? it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. He, didn't, he needed to have gone through all of this anyway. Yeah. Because she was never going to leave. Yeah. Uh, and then she rings him to tell him that she's not leaving, and he yeah. Ooh, the ring makes a telephone, jump. makes him jump. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Ah. So he drops the box of shoe box full of wires and then the church yeah. blows up. Yeah. <laughs> Havoc. Amazingly. Havoc blew, blew the place up, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, okay. That's a, quite a downer. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then the coda is yeah. them sort of, sort, sort, sort of sifting through the rubble, the police yeah. and Mary. And he goes, ah, oh, yes. So I suppose, you know, it must have been. Uh, he must have gone and got uh, Bernard Cribbins' stuff. <laughs> yeah. How, however, he forgot what his uh, his. He might have remembered his name, but he forgot what he, what he was known as. Gunpowder Charlie. Gun to the end. Charlie. Yeah. So, bit of a bit of a damp squib that one, wasn't it? Yeah. If it's damn squib, it would have gone off. So. <laughs> and you don't see um, Cribbins again. He's disappeared no. by that point. No, he's already cashing the check, isn't he? Yeah. 
So it's a very oddly written piece of television drama, mm. wasn't it? It didn't feature Roald Dahl at the start Correct. in a dressing gown sat by a fireside. Yeah, but I think it's because um, Roald Dahl only, only did the first uh, couple of seasons and then the rest of it was other people. Oh, well, really? Yeah. Mm. So the guy who, uh, the original story for this one, um, mm. this guy wrote loads of stuff under loads of different pseudonyms, but he got um, picked up by Alfred Hitchcock and he wrote a, a loads of the Alfred Hitchcock Presents. The, oh, um, right, okay. But it was uh, adapta- ad- it adapted for um, British television by um, a British guy. But, um, oh, yeah, I see. I was listening to um, something on BBC Sounds the other day. It was a hmm. Roald Dahl short story, and it was about um, a woman who's cooking dinner for a husband. He comes home, gives her bad news. She murders him using a, a, a frozen leg of lamb. mm mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And then cooks Marshall. the lamb and feeds it to the police. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I, was I like, think I'm sure I've read this story before. And then I realised it was an episode of Tales of the Unexpected. Yeah, I'd seen yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, I think I've seen that one. Yeah, um, which is it's it's quite a good because obviously then she destroys the evidence of the the uh, murder weapon. Um, but I was like, God, I'm sure I I know what's happening in this story. I'm sure I've heard this before. And then I realised it was a Tales of the Unexpected. Yeah, I just watched one tonight, which was um, about a woman who was over, it was eavesdropping another conversation at a restaurant, and then she was convinced that this woman um, was having an affair with her husband. And mm. I just kept becoming obsessed with it and kept going back every lunchtime and listening more and more. And mm. then she noticed that this woman was wearing um, a watch, which... Uh, which um, was the same as the one she'd lost, and she was convinced her husband gave it to her. So um, yeah. on the on the way back, she pushes her out in front of a, uh, a lorry, and the woman gets run over. Oh gosh! And then her husband rings her up at home to say, "Oh, we're going to Munich on a work trip. Could you pack my my bag?" And when she gets the yeah. suitcase down, the, her watch falls out of the suitcase because it was oh. um, in there. So it was all in her mind. That How was, unexpected! Uh, but, yeah, that was a good a one. Silly cow. <laughs> The one, I it was the one cool. that I jealous, I, stupid women. That one is called, isn't it? <laughs> one of the one of the ones I remember from the books, and I don't know. They must have filmed this one. Is that there's a guy on a cruise, and he's like an absolute degenerate gambler, and says yeah. to and and makes a bet, and he's like losing all his money while he's he's on this cruise, and he says to this guy, "Look, um, I'll I've really really got to win my money back. So like an all or nothing bet." I bet yeah. you anything, this ship won't get in dock at Singapore or what have you, and so it, it will be late. This ship, yeah. the ship won't dock, dock at the uh, the correct time. And the guy says, "Yeah, all right, I'll I'll take the bet." And then what he does is he thinks that every day when he's been walking around the the, the ship, there's been an old lady who sat in one position, who he always says good morning to, and he's like, "Right, what I'll do is I'll throw myself overboard." The old lady will see me. She'll call for help. Mm, they'll, yeah. you know, they'll have to stop the ship to come and yeah. get me. And then I win the bet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then he kind of like you know, launches himself overboard, and it kind of it finishes with the old lady getting her white stick out, and she's blind. <laughs> so the thing that's is, with all of these stories. Yeah. We we tell that. In like yeah. three or four sentences, yeah. in a minute, and then and you're like, oh, that's clever, yeah. And mm. then they drag it out over 29 minutes with yeah. probably an, an advert break in the middle as well. Yeah, yeah. But- <laughs> the one I very, very clearly remember is when I was um, staying over my father's house. So this would have been in 1985. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's uh, and I, it was on repeated recently on um, Sky Arts, mm-hmm. and I, I was watching the episode and I was like, "This is really weird," but this like it's almost like deja vu because mm. I've never seen it since. Mm. And it's a, it's an episode mm. where a landlady is murdering and stuffing the the young men that come and stay in her mm. um, bread and breakfast. Yes. And all I remember yes. is the final scene, which is um, a guy is like anaesthetized and he's ushered into this room. And then you see his new kind of um, uh, housemates and she's like, oh, meet your new friends kind of thing. And it's like uh, two blokes in bed, I think, two two mm. like single beds in like an attic room. And they're obviously stuffed. Mm. 
And oh my God, that absolutely <laughs> scared the living yeah. shit out of me when I was seven. Yeah. And then I saw it again, like very recently. And I was just like, whoa, this is really dark. And I haven't seen it for like, well, nearly 40 years. Yeah. And mm. it was just, wow. Like they don't seem to put anything like this on television well, anymore at all. Again, whenever we say this, we always then go, oh, Inside Number Nine does it. But then, yeah, yeah, that's it. But that's about it, isn't yeah. it? Like, yeah. yeah. But they just announced that Series Nine is going to be their last series. So oh, they're, really? They're Makes making sense. Series Eight now. So the one mm. after that is going to be their last series. It must be mm. really hard to c- come up yeah. with new material. Yeah. Because yeah. it's just been those two for like nine seasons, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Bloody hell. So, so the, one, the one me and James watched when we was in Glastonbury was about, yeah. um, it was an American one where two, uh, a, a rich guy was... David uh, Cassidy, no less. Yeah, David Cassidy. <laughs> he was killed by David Cassidy, but David Cassidy was a, a twin. Twin. And they did lots yeah. of um, uh, split, split screen, screen shots. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he was like, like yeah one of them I killed admit it, but that I did it you, yeah yes yeah, yeah but you can't prove which what you can't prove which one of it of us it was yeah they were really smug about it I can't remember David Cassidy, did it. so like oh, I was it something to do with a kiss yeah it was at the end a kiss wasn't it? It was something to do with a kiss I can't remember yeah yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> thrilling for the, for the listener but yeah <laughs> But me and James, we'd, we, was, was we, we'd all packed and we... Were, were so when was this? Had I met you at this point or was this after I'd met you? This is our, just... We saw on our way home, but we'd, we'd, oh, all, yeah, we'd all got dressed, all had our bags and we stood by like, holding our bags in the in the hotel room just yeah. to wait to see what the twist was. So I think we stood there for about <laughs> 10 minutes to, sort of, to work out how they're going to get out of this one. So this was on Sky Arts as well? It was, it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. It's, it's weird scheduling, isn't it? Like... Mm. Middle of the day, there's like a, two episodes, isn't there? Yeah, it's considering like, this was like seen as way too scary and must be on really late at night, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and now it's just on in the day for anyone to watch. Yes. Yeah. But I, I was watching Talking Pictures about three years ago, or four years ago now, before lockdown. And there was a film on at like four o'clock, four o'clock in the afternoon. And... Um, it was a cowboy film with Ursula Andress. Mm. Wow. And then about halfway through, she's like topless <laughs> in the water. Yikes. I was like, this is on it. What on earth is going on? John is scrambling for the VHS tape to try and record it. <laughs> Where's my booby tape, hair? Huh? Where's my booby tape? I can't tape? put this on. <laughs> she was in work pre-lockdown. <laughs> yeah, so it's just... I, th- I think that these channels, they put stuff on and they're just like, no one's going to bloody watch it. It doesn't matter what we put on. Exactly, yeah. Mm. Uh, and, and, uh, our demographic are over 60s. They can handle it. It's just, yeah. Or it they've seen tip worse. Over. Yeah. It might tip, top, tip them over the edge but what to see we- Ursula Andress naked. So what did we think of this episode? Ah, uh, it's it's pretty derisory for me. Yeah, but it was good to see Bernard doing something a little bit different. Although the last few <laughs> things we've watched, it, he'd been a similar kind of. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'd say I, I can't remember now, but relative to my previous scores, this is probably like a one out of five uh, or something, isn't it? That's the same as what we all gave Scar of Dracula. That was. Oh yeah, right. so it's, I get, I get, it's, it's a one. Yeah, I'd say it, this is a two for me then, because Scarlet okay. Dracula is is Crap. charmless. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the best I can say about it. Okay. <laughs> so it's a uh, yeah, it's a one for me. Uh, no, I'm going to give it a two. I'm going to give it a two. Yeah. So, but it was Come nice on, to watch something that was only half an hour long. Yeah. <laughs> I was really yes. satisfied with that. I, I like, think. Great yeah, fun. I think that is a good thing because sometimes ninety minutes is like. Yeah, yeah, you're talking about ideas being spread over 30 minutes here. Like sometimes mm. a hammer film, like ideas spread over 90 minutes. You're just like fucking it, guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, come on. Well, Listen, <laughs> <laughs> if this was hammer, they would have shown his that whole bike ride that guy did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, yes. it was good to watch the Tales in Expected. I think I will watch more of them. But. I think we should. Yeah, I think we should definitely do more of them, and I think we should certainly do. Uh, maybe a randomised selection of the episodes of the Hammer House of Horror yeah. uh, Hammer House of TV Horror series. and that other one you got us to watch where it was, it was a bit like Eleanor Rigby in the titles so I watched one of those that was quite good oh yeah there's not there's not many episodes of that what was it called? about I can't remember it's 
something of fear, tales of fear, and Ooh. that was on Talking Pictures as well. Yeah. Not, I uh, have I have just bought the DVD box set of the Rivals of Sherlock Holmes after ooh. seeing um, that on Talking Pictures. One of the which, people in this was in that because I saw that in. The, oh, really? Yeah. It does it, 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 it? It's it's not horror, obviously. So there's no point in us watching this, but it's mm. it's um. It's TV plays based on um, f- detective fiction written at the same time as Conan Doyle. Oh, that's interesting. Sherlock Holmes. That's a good idea. So it's a really good. It's a really good idea. So one of them is um, um, the guy that when you said about private lives of Sherlock Holmes, the guy who plays Sherlock Holmes in that, whose name I can't remember, plays another blind detective, mm-hmm. and that's a really good episode. That's really fun because he he's got a kind of Holmesian sense of forensic analysis, but he's blind. Mm-hmm. So that one, that episode is really good. But um, yeah, it's like a Thames television series from like 1971 or 72 yeah. or something. But uh, it's really well done. The sets are great, and uh, one of them is um, uh, what's his name now? The baddie from Porridge, um, Peter. Peter Vaughan. Yeah. One of them's Peter Vaughan as well. So that's Grouty. Good. Is that his name? Is that what he's called? Yeah, I, can't, I think it's called Grouty. Can't Grouty. Remember. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, there was Dead of Night was a TV series as well, wasn't it? It was a TV Yes. Series. Yeah. That's, we can watch some episodes of that. That's good. Mm. Mm. There's one where they're having a, a weird party. It's, it's just a lot of, <laughs> a lot of these 70s things you watch, they're like, it's people having weird dinner parties and having a nervous <laughs> breakdown in the course of... Yeah. And you think, a lot of people are dinner parties. Yeah, and they, and they all get fed a human at the end or something. So. <laughs> um, are you going to do your intro? Okay. Uh, so, that was... I got to cover with the intro. So, now it's time for... <laughs> Something horrific. Something uh, we've watched, done, read. This week. Th- this week, yeah. <laughs> just say, we're probably going to be doing these episodes monthly from now on, um, just to let you know. But um, uh, So this month, John, what have you done horrifically? Well, what I've, well it's not, it's, it wasn't horrific, but it was sci-fi. But I think it says on Twitter Ooh. that we're allowed to do some sci-fi. Yes, um, yes. So while I've been painting recently, I've been listening to a sci-fi drama on BBC Sounds, mm-hmm. which is called The Slide, which Ooh. was written by um, TV's Victor Pemberton, who wrote uh, a Patrick Troughton story for Doctor Who, which is called Fury from the Deep. Mm. And The Slide is... He didn't write um, Spearhead from Space, did he? He didn't write Spearhead from Space, no. no. Okay. I think I can't remember who did. I think that was Terence Dix. Oh, okay. But um, it is the only... Um, Doctor Who story that was ever shot entirely on 16 millimeter. Oh, yeah, uh, interesting. That's the reason why that they've done, uh, they've been able to do such a good Blu ray. Yeah, that'd be good. We should um, do that sometime. Uh, we should do that one sometime. But um, yeah, so it's called The Slide. It's quite Nigel Neal. Mm. Um, I think I've, I've heard it, I think. What's it I'd about? I'd say that it doesn't need to be seven episodes long. But it is, if you want atmospheric 1960s. It's about an earthquake. It's about a kind of sentient mud that comes out of the ground and ca- tries to take over a town yes. somewhere in Dorset or somewhere. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Maybe you live okay. by there now. Yeah. Um, but it's got Morris Denham in. It's got Roger Delgado. Who yes. Is t- t- I I he's the master from yes. Doctor Who. Yes. So, yeah, it's... it's um, he's in spirit it, from space. He isn't. Uh-huh. <laughs> He's in Terror of the Autons. That's the Autons one he's with. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's his first story. That's the Master's first story. Um, so, yeah, so that it's very, very, very worth listening to. It's got good sound effects from Radiophonic Workshop. Um, it's got, well, it's just got loads of atmosphere, and I really enjoyed it while I was painting away. Um, it's good to pass a few hours, and I would give it. A solid eight out of ten, oh, really. There we go. Or three out of five. So three point uh, five out of five. So it did much better in this episode. James. Oh yes. Have, yes. Have you got anything for us? Yes. Uh, Kirsty and I went to see the play oh, yes. two twenty two. I'm very jealous. The what? Right. Okay. There. There has been. What a did play you go and see, James? 
a, a play called 222. Oh, yes. Is this is what Lily Allen was in before. Yes. 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 Yeah. Um, my, you, like, this is a trend that started since like the late 90s. Remember the play Art? Yes. yes. Where it, it was, you know, in, in short, a person tries to sell an empty frame and the mm. whole play is about how sort of like the foot with one philosophical friend is like well you know well what is art the other one's on the make and the other one's sort of caught in the middle and the whole idea behind art was that it was just a play that could run and run and you just kept on dropping stars into it yes thus keeping the run going and this is something that it seems like they've done with 222 as john correctly says is that you know started off with lily allen in it although and i'm Max really thinking Fanning. Uh, yeah, and uh, but though I'm now starting to think they're getting towards the bottom of the bar- bar- uh, barrel, with all due respect, because we had Matt Willis from Busted. <sighs> oh wow! Right. Did, did have, um, Ga- Gary Wilmot and uh, <laughs> Bella Embers, uh, Jimmy when, Cricket. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it, it's a ghost thing, though, isn't it? It's written by the yes. guy who did, um, yeah, Uncanny. Yes. Now, what I would say is this: is that number one, first of all, it's being shown in the uh, the theater at piccadilly circus which mm. i've never been down into but you go down into it it's a oh. subterranean theater and what i would say is you know ross and i were lucky enough we went and saw ghost stories when ghost stories came out. yeah the, yeah and for good. me that is still the high watermark for something being spooky and kirsty and i were talking about this afterwards and i said if you're going to do something spooky in a theater you've got to use the medium properly you've got to use the fact that you're seeing something on stage because yeah. really what this felt like was something that could have just easily been done on TV. <laughs> that there was nothing extra spooky mm. about it being in the theater. And it could have been really, really easily. And it's, it's a one set play ultimately. Mm. And as I was watching it, I did think Ross would be spending this whole time going, trying to guess the end. <laughs> yeah. And or they do say at the end, do not, sp- you know, don't reveal. And you know, I, I wouldn't do that. Cool. But then, yeah. th- but what I do have to say is that the, the, uh, the, the main thing I want to report back in is the fact that behind us, so yeah. act one, and it's all uh, underway and characters talking about what's going on and all this, this, there's things going on in the house. And it's like, but isn't that what you want me to say? And yes, you know, <laughs> you, you've always denied ghosts and things like that. And then from behind me, <laughs> Amazing. And I turned around and there was a guy who had to be in his late fifties, just absolutely fucking out. He was watching it on his own. He was asleep. Wow. He was, he was on his own and absolutely fast asleep. And it's, there were people next to him who weren't with him, yeah. but they were yeah. just sort of sat looking straight ahead. And I turned yeah. around and looked at them. And I looked at the lady who was sat next to me who looked utterly mortified. Yeah. And so that, you know, once a teacher, always a teacher. So I leant back, I turned around and I sort of grabbed him by the knee and I went, sir, you are snoring quite loudly. <laughs> so he went, whoa, whoa. And because of that, because of the size of the theatre, I don't know how far that travelled. <laughs> because it's not a big theatre. So I don't know if my admonishing this guy for, for, for snoring. But yeah, he... Uh, Amazing. He, he vanished for Act 2. He did not did return. He? But, yeah, he was only there for Act 1. Good Lord. Maybe he was a ghost. <laughs> maybe. Sleeping oh, oh, maybe. Maybe. Maybe he's the one in the Graham Greene story who's done the murder. Ooh. Oh yeah, she told me about that. Yeah, that's a great story. Um, oh, I, I think I read it. So who was? It? <laughs> so who was in it, James? Gary. It Will- was <laughs> yeah, Gary, um, Matt Willis from Busted. Yeah, uh, and then a couple of other people. Paul Mackey I, was in it once, I think. Yeah, but it was a couple who? of people that I didn't recognise. Should, should have been somebody from. I think oh. it was like someone from Love Island was supposed to be in it, and she. It was oh, one God. of those. Tonight, her role will be being played. What? You know, the understudy travel. was in. Yeah. And yeah. the elderly couple that was sat next to Kirsty were furious oh, <laughs> that really? she wasn't in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kirsty heard them yeah. comp- uh, heard them complaining to yes. us. She's going, why was this not announced before Curtin came up? It's like, well, what can you do about it? Mm. You paid the yeah. money for tonight. The show's yes. about to start. But anyway, so yeah, it was, so it was only really kind of Matt Willis from Busted who was mm. anyone of... I would have gone to see Lily Allen because she's one mm. of my top, top pin-up, top pop pin-ups. But um, and, I don't know. It, uh, yeah, how long is the play? 
This is two acts. Um, yeah, it's, it, it was two. It was two hours. Started at half oh, past seven, finished long. at half past nine with a, a long, like, twenty-five yeah. minute interval. Yeah. yeah. Well, my my thing. I started reading Anno Dracula. Oh, has anyone read this? No. Is that Kim Newman? Kim Newman, yeah, it looks yes. like a big book. Cleaves. It's the first of a, a series of books. So it's um the the, the blurb is. It's 1888. Queen Victoria has remarried, taken her new consort, the Vol- <gasps> Vol- hmm. I can't say that word. Welkian Prince, inf- infamously known as Count Dracula. His polluted bloodline spread through London as oh. citizens increasingly choose to become vampires. Um, in the grim back streets of Whitechapel, a killer known as Silver Knife has cut down vampire girls. The eternal young vampire Guinevere. Oh, I can't read these words. Um, Genevieve. Yeah, Genevieve. Something. 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 So basically. <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't read out loud um, but are you reading the book please or do I, you just skip words in the book well I, I look at the names as like shapes so I know who they are and also <laughs> really helpfully he's got the names of all the characters on the front and explains who they are yeah so, I did nice so, I did wonder so, so when I'm that going, who's was. that old he's a spy alright so not it hasn't got much of a story to it yet um <laughs> It uh, looks like a bloody long story for and, the thickness of the book. And I think it's a lot of um, this person being clever to put in like loads of Victorian, so like uh, Dr. Jekyll's in it, mm. um, Sherlock Holmes is in it. Um, you know, basically any famous mm. Victorian person is is in it in some way. And, mm. I, and I, I think there's a lot of references which are going over my head. So but, it's like League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Yeah, but it's basically... Yeah. Um, most the, the, lo, there's loads of vampires in London, and, and it's all mm. about like there's vampires in in the um, in the House of Parliament, so they have to have it at night and all that kind of stuff. Wow. And, no surprise. And uh, yeah. Doctor uh-huh. Stewart is um, basically S- Jack the Ripper. Saywood. 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 Mm. I thought it was Doctor Saywood. I was I thought it was Seward. Oh, it's Saywood. Oh, I've always said Saywood. Anyway, he's Jack the Ripper. He's going around killing um, because he's killing um, vampires. And, uh, oh, and they're semi, okay. uh, but in the manner of um, he's using a silver, um, sc- uh, you know, scalpel in order to cut mm. their hearts out. Yeah. So um, everyone's trying As to, do. and everyone's trying to find out who it is and trying to stop him at the moment. But it's, yes. it's okay. It's 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 all right. Uh, but the one other thing I got is um, wait, there, I'm gonna go and get it. Alexa, turn on the loft. Okay. What's he say? He's talking to Alexa, isn't he? To turn on the loft. The loft. What the fuck does that mean? Oh, God, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to be like three seconds, not seven seconds. Yeah. <laughs> what is he doing? I can't go to work in the morning. <laughs> you know, I know. <laughs> There he is. There I, he is, look. I can't find that. I'll do that next time. <laughs> 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 Basically, it's the, um, I got the soundtrack to the, the spin off podcast we're doing. Um, mm. We did Possum recently, which is, yeah. um, yes. the music is by the Radi- Radiophonic Workshop, and I've got it on 12 inch. Um, the real Radiophonic Workshop. Yeah. yeah. Someone using the name. The, the real oh. Radiophonic Workshop. Some Who of the, is it, though? Oh. Is it Marquez? Yeah, I think so. I could get, I'll get the. I'll, find, uh, I'll go and find it one second. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have to go and find it, but there we are. But it is good. I will say that that you know. Was, so, wait, is it a British but, film then? Yes, it is. It's it's oh, the guy who right. is Garth Marenghi. Oh, it's, it's, right. So it's very it. weird, and he says, you know, it's influenced by German expressionism. Oh, so yeah, it's it goes on a fair old. You know, it's uh, as we were just talking about tonight. The, it could have been done in forty five minutes, yeah, really effectively done in forty five. Oh, because it was because it's called Possum. I thought it was Australian. Mm. Oh, no, no. <laughs> hello, Possum. Possum. <laughs> the Marquez. Yeah, he's on flute, piano, lampshades, samples, and effects. Oh. Um, Peter Howell. Oh, yes. Paddy Kingsland. Yes. Roger Lim. Yes. Yeah. Kieran Pepper. I don't know who that yeah. is. And, uh, but they use elements from Delia Darcher's archives. Yeah. Well, but, the first few are, are like Doctor Who VIPs, aren't they? Yeah. Mm. But it's really nice um, record. But inside, I didn't expect this. 
Uh, this is an LP. There's two LPs. But, but one of them, where is it? Where is it? It's got a little book. And basically in the film, the boy, the, the guy has been, had a little book for the drawings. And James, James, that. Mm. It's got, oh, wow. It's got all the illustrations out of the film. Cool. Mm. Like, so that's really nice. So, um, yeah, that was worth getting just for the, that little book in there. Um, and lastly, I'd be doing, I've started another podcast called Dark Darset, D-A-R-Z-E-T, mm. which uh, explores um, legends and mysteries and weird goings on in Dorset, which I'm doing with my friend David. We done, Dorset. By the time this comes out, there'll be three episodes out of that. So we've done... Mm. The Wood Woes of Yellow Le- Yellowham Forest. So there's Ooh. a legend of a Wood Woes, which is a, a, essentially a British Bigfoot, which is meant to live in the woods um, near me. So is that you, Cleaver? Uh, <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> is that not just Ross after a few drinks? <laughs> Work, get up! <laughs> get up! <laughs> and there's the, um, the Singing Barrows of Weymouth, which is apparently... Um, some of the the uh, the barrows. If you go and listen to them at midday, you can hear fairy music. And what's a barrow? Uh, you mean like a earth mound? A, yes, a tumulus. Yes. So not like a wheelbarrow. No. <laughs> there's um <laughs> there's a couple of um ones near us called the Bink and Bumps. So oh yeah, and and the one we're just doing now is the the uh, the the death and the ghost of Lawrence of Arabia because he died no. in a motorbike accident. Near yes. There. Oh, that's good. Um. And we've also made um, videos about all of those, so they're all on YouTube, so check them out. Cool. Yeah. Brilliant. There we are. Very so, good. Lots of stuff in that episode. I'm gonna, um, I'll cut that into something which makes sense. But next yes. time, I can't... Re- so we had a vote by oh, our listeners fuck. of what we're going to watch. Night of the Demon, wasn't and it? And Night of the Demon won. Thank God. By one vote. Yes. <laughs> so we have Was that me voting for it? Probably. So well done, John. You got the one you wanted to watch. Yes. So next time will be uh, Night of the Demon, the black uh, and white amazing. adaptation of a MRT. It's Games. coming. It's in the trees. Yes. When I was a child, running in the night. <laughs> Very more of that next time. Brilliant. That's yeah. the sample from Kate Kate Bush's uh, Hands of Love. Excellent. We can, u- we can use that without paying any royalties, can't we? She, yeah, she's done all right. She's done all right over the last <laughs> year, so she, she won't mind. She doesn't need pennies, does she? <laughs> but until then... Yeah, on that bombshell. Happy day. Yeah. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. Love, nice like, and peace, everyone. Take care. Yay! Goodbye. You have been listening to The General Witch Finders. Support the show and continue the conversation at patreon.com forward slash general witch finders. Subscribe and spread the word at generalwitchfinders.com. Farewell. You don't have nightmares. was okay there were there were times in which there was some like ridiculous melodrama happening <laughs> like at one point the one character goes because i just wanted to prove you wrong for once in your life <laughs> <laughs> nobody talks like this <laughs> no there was so, so much sort of theatrical and as a man yes. who's done a bit of amdram myself there was i did think this is really <laughs> on the line between amdram and amazing you know, kind when of you profession. brought up that you was at, yeah. uh, in amateur dramatics mm. I just thought of um, Buzz Lightyear. Was there anything in the play you was in to do with Buzz Lightyear? No, absolutely not. Okay, why, did, why is my brain... What play did you do, James? Ah, well. <laughs> I did. Uh, my uh, my colleague and friend from uh, Paul High School, yeah. she was a part of a amateur, amateur dramatics group. And what they did was that they yeah. alternated between doing a musical and a play. But, oh. of course, when you do a play, you've got to pay for the rights. 
Oh. So they were two plays that she had written, the mm. play what I wrote, you know, for all oh, intents and really? purposes. One was uh, like a play within a play idea. It was all set in a group of uh, people doing amateur dramatics. Mm. Yes. So there was times in which, like, so the t- they, we had separated the, the stage into two. And when we were on the front half of the stage, it was as if we were on st- the characters were on stage doing their amateur dramatics. And when we were on the the rear part, that was like, oh, well, you know, what's going Is that on? The in one rear? I watched. I'm not. That, the, do you did you watch the murder mystery one? Can't, I'm right honest, but anyway the best bit the, the, the best bit is my mum bless her my, my mum is fantastic she's not it's where I get it from she's not the quietest woman you'll ever meet mm. and she very kindly said that she'd come along with my sisters to watch and support me in this yeah. and the climax of the first act is that all of the players involved get involved you know the 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 issues and the problems come to a head. Yeah. And every people all storm off stage. They're like, I'm leaving. And, ah, blah, blah, blah. and then two people start fighting and a bit of the stage falls over and things such as that. And <laughs> it's just left with me. And I go, ah, okay. If you want to have a chat with the ladies on the front desk, they'll give you your money back. <laughs> right. And, and the, right. And, and, and the curtains close. <laughs> and I just heard my mum go, is it finished? Yeah. Is that the end? <laughs> <laughs> and I've been so tempted to open. I go, no, mum, that's half time. Yeah, I can remember. And, and close, uh, yeah, you know. So that was her one classic. And then the second <laughs> one we did, which I got a bit, was really good. She did like an Agatha Christie murder mystery mm. thing, wherein it was all kind of set in the nineteen twenties in sort of like a Dorset country house, and I was the victim. Oh. I played like this upstart, rich, you know, American millionaire who yeah. come over to try and buy his way into like the English gentry, and it was brilliant because I just got to be horrible to everyone and for the entire that. act. Like, hey, you listen to me, doll. You you shut your goddamn cake hole. I own this house, and when I say you do what I say, all right? You know, so I got to do all things like this. It was great. The one night I heard someone gasp. I was so <laughs> pleased. I went, ah. I just thought, oh, wow, well, you know, I'm getting this is good. This is going well but then as i was doing so it was it was good in the fact that i died at the end of the first that act so for the yeah. second half of the play i just got to sit my feet up and just come on <laughs> come on for the bows at the end so i was enjoying that but as is always the way with amateur dramatics you are often you often run into people who maybe aren't as fully committed to putting on the yeah. play as you and you, you've got to make the best of whoever turns up and volunteers so this one old lady, she basically had her lines inside her handbag oh, <laughs> at the, the times. And she was supposed to be, because uh, it was all supposed to be the 20s, she was from like this temper, supposed to be from like this temperance guild. And she wanted to come and admonish me for making all my money through alcohol. And then I turned to her and I said, and what do you want, toots? And she went, <laughs> and she was supposed to say, Mr. Prancer, I have been so disgusted with the way that you've made money here, so on and so forth. And I was then going to go, oh, yeah, I've heard it this all before. Right. And then I went, and what do you want, Tuts? The one night. And she went, I've forgotten my lines. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you just stand there and you think, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> and, and I looked at her for a moment, like, and she went, no. And I just went, I think... I don't know, but I'm going to guess that maybe you're here because you don't like the fact that I've made money from alcohol. And she went, oh, yes, that is it. I don't like the fact that I just remember thinking, Christ on skates. This is really... And so that was kind of it, really. And the fact that the rehearsal was always on Friday night. 